Hi folks and welcome back to a very windy fishing with Den again. So last week he saw me on the match and uh, I was reduced to fishing with the feeder. Uh, couldn't hold the pole so really windy and it's really windy again today. So what I've done, I've found a little pond locally and I've tried to find the <laughs> most secluded corner where it's not blowing a gale. Uh, obviously I've still got some wind on here and as you can see my pole's trying to go away. I've got some wind where I am and I'm actually just below the lip of a hill so I'm not too bad. Over there I'd never be able to hold the pole. Never fished this swim before, um, not sure what it holds but I've plumbed the depth and I've got about that which is six feet or so. Got quite a heavy float on, homemade one as usual and in fact it's the same one gram float that I had on last week. So it's exactly the same rig with the 14 hook and everything else. It's only a pleasure day. I can only fish probably seven or eight meters out and that's gonna have to do me. As far as the swim goes, I uh, plumbed around a bit. Because I'm in the corner, it kind of sweeps around like that in a bowl and then gets gradually deeper as I go across that way. So I found a flattish bit. And as I say, it's at about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one ball of ground bait with some uh, feed in it just down there then I'm gonna have a cup of tea and see how we go don't know what to expect today it may or may not work and you may or may not get to see this video but anyway I'm gonna enjoy myself and I'm gonna give it a go I'm gonna give it a few loose pellets as well a little bit of sweet corn and one ball of ground bait might as well be comfortable working smarter not harder he said hopefully and hoping that we don't get blown off the pond later because it's going to get even stronger. Okay, now I've worked out, I'm on a top two plus three, whatever that is, and I've worked out that around about there is the flattish spot. So with that done, I'll get some bait on and we'll get out there. We're really not sure how this is going to pan out, but you have to get out of the house sometimes, don't you? I'm just going to put one piece of corn on, but a fairly big piece. And away we go. Now, I don't know about snags in this swim. Uh, other places I've fished have been quite snaggy. And certainly yesterday I came down for a look and there was a branch that had fallen off a tree. And I've actually had to hoik it up the back there. Whoa. This, this may not be good. <laughs> I'll get that in a second. But here we are. I'm going to fish just about there-ish if I can. Now I've actually got the little uh, peg in there so that I can actually do the pole with no hands because it's going to be hellish on my arthritis today. But I'm going to go and collect this pole, get me a cup of tea out and I'll come back to you once things start to happen. Okay, well I've got my cup of tea so I just thought I'd explain to you how I go about beating the wind with a pole. And not everybody does it the same, everyone's got their own ideas, but most things should flow through across the whole range of anglers. So the first thing is, if you're going to fish a pole, don't try and fish at 16 metres if you can't control it. If you can't control your pole and it's going all the way over the place, you're gonna, not going to have any control over the rig. And so, totally pointless. So come shorter and shorter until you can effectively control it. And of course, if the wind gets to the point where you can't control it at short distances, then you're going to have to consider some other method. But today I've managed to get to a top two plus um, three sections, which is probably oh, seven or eight meters, I guess. Um, and I can actually hold it at that. I'll come back to the holding part shortly, but as far as the rig goes, let me just show you that. Hopefully we won't get everything blown away like a minute ago. Let's try and put that down there, I think, out of the way. Right, so rig-wise, oh, bait's come off, a good start then. All right, so I've actually got a one gram float on. Now, I've got something like six feet of water, and so on a really good day, you could probably get away with a 0.5 or a 0.6 gram float. But it's not a really good day, it's a horrible day, and there's gonna be undertow, your float's gonna need to boss the conditions. So I've got a one gram float on. I mean, I've had times where I've had 1.5 or even 2 grams, or even on some extreme cases, up to 4 gram floats on, trying to control the conditions. Um, coming down, oh, just my little fine tune has moved a bit. Coming down, I've got a strung out bulk here, as you can probably see, if that stops from 
shaking around, strung out bulk, a couple of droppers down, a couple of number eights down. The, the bulk is uh, number sixes, by the way. There's no point in messing around with number eights as far as I'm concerned when you've got a one gram float on. And I'm fishing probably five or six inches over depth. And I'll come back to that as well in a second. One of the really important parts of this rig is the back shot. Uh, if you haven't been doing this for a long time, you may not be aware of the back shot, but it's vital. Now, some people use two or three number eights or, or different things. Some people use an even bigger shot. I like to use number eight shot on there. And what that does, if your rod's in the water, sorry, if your pole's um, out and your rig's in the water, it creates this sort of dip because it sinks the line like that. So if your pole tip's moving around like this and your float's pulling around like this, that's probably not any good because your bait's also moving unnaturally on the bottom. So back shot, absolutely vital. And what I tend to do is I take the distance from the float to the, um, the connection point, take the midpoint, and then I put my back shot just fractionally on the, the pole side of the midpoint. And the reason for that is if you have it too far down here, when it goes in the water, it can actually sink your float if you've got it too far this way. So those are the, the main things. Now, if I just get some bait on a second, uh, again, I'll just put that single piece of corn on. Using a reasonably heavy bait as well. Right, I'll get the thing out there. Hang on, just get that round. Okay, so as I've said, I can fish with a top two plus three fairly comfortably, but rather than trying to hold the pole in the usual way like that you can try it but if the wind's really across you like that that's when i actually resort to the pole bar and this is one instance when i think the pole bar is a really good thing now my pole bar's homemade as you probably all know um, i've got this little peg in there to stop it from moving if you buy a pole bar from preston or matrix or something like that it'll have bumps in it and it's also called a bump bar that holds your pole in position so it doesn't move also, you can see here, I've got this loop at the back. Again, I made my uh, tackle box, but if you bought a tackle box, it'll probably have a little recess in there with a rubber thing on it, and you can just push that in. What that then does is keep everything as steady as possible. You'll also note that the pole tip is underwater, so that rather than the wind catching it and flapping it all over the place, that dampens the effect of the wind pushing it around. So now what I've got is the pole float sitting quite naturally. So hopefully, fairly shortly, we should get some bites. Just following on from that uh, last little segment, um, the wind has literally just got up and it's really gusty now, but you can see how the float is actually still sitting pretty stable in the water. And then I think I mentioned before, I'm actually five or six inches on the bottom so that even when it does pull back like that, the bait is probably still pretty much in situ. You have to bear in mind, of course, that when it's blowing like this, there's an undertow, usually quite a big undertow, and so things are moving on the bottom, but the more you can slow it down, the better. That looks like something going on. Just little knocks. Oh, what have we got here? I'm not sure what I've got. Well, it is a carp. You'll notice that I haven't got the sections out behind me for the additional sections. And the reason for that is that I'm fishing pretty heavy and the water's really cold, so I'm not expecting to have to today. I'm using a 22 elastic, and you can see that this fish is not... Whoops! <laughs> Get in. Uh, there we go. No, not. Oh, no, 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 he's woken up, <laughs> taking that snag with him. Right, okay, so, as you see, I'm not needing it, but, obviously, if you are going to need it, you're going to need to find a way to get those extra sections of pole out behind you, ready to be attached. Let's try that again. Right, well, I made a bit of a pig's ear of that, but we've got him, so that's the main thing. Uh, decent enough fish. I'm thinking probably, let's have a look, we're looking at, oh, probably about four or five pounds. I will show you this one, just in case. 
There we go, look, nice fat fish. Good start to the day. So, it seems I do know something about what I'm talking about when it comes to fishing in the wind. Whew. Oh, oh, missed it. <laughs> well, at least we're getting one or two bites, which is great. Wasn't absolutely sure today. I'm actually pinning the pole between my stomach and my leg just to make sure I can keep it in position. Don't want the thing blowing away, do I? And then release and go. Of course, it helps if you've got a, a rather a larger protrusion, <laughs> which seems to happen more and more as you get older. All right, put it in, give it a little bit of slack and then into the rest and that saves the arthritis too let's just get that back a little bit because you can always readjust once it's in but Ooh, it's all about getting some kind of control today i am getting a bit chilly now i think it's about 11 degrees something like that But you can see now why having that little bit of um, line on the bottom, as the float's moving around, yes, it could move it slightly, but nowhere near as much as if you're right, just touching bottom. You might have noticed I've got a reasonably thick tip on the float. It's probably somewhere between two and two and a half millimeters uh, wide, and it's made of cane, so it's fairly buoyant too. Bear in mind, you've got undertow, and obviously that's gonna create a bit of a problem for pulling against the float. So you don't want something which is really thin in my view. I tend to use this, and I also, as you see, don't worry too much about having a reasonable amount sticking out. You aren't in the absolute, absolute finesse conditions that you might be um, when it's a flat, calm day. Today, you know, you've gotta be able to see the bites, and you don't want your float dragging under. So I don't worry too much about having a reasonable amount of the float sticking out. Yep, and again. Again, it's uh, not a major pull. As I say, I don't really want to have to put the extra sections on and because it's so cold, I don't think I'm gonna need to. I'm coming in a bit like bream. Let's try and find somewhere to put this down so I can, don't lose it, put it under there out of the way. Always make sure you tuck it out of the way somewhere. On this occasion, I couldn't put it underneath my stomach because I was doing this. Lots of snags in the corner. Let's see if we can avoid them. Still getting into that little bit of stick that's down there. I don't think this one's quite as big. But uh, not like the height of summer fishing, is it, where they go off like lunatics? This one's actually got spawn in it, would you believe? In this cold weather as well. I will show you that. It could have been spawn bound, I suppose, from earlier in the year, but you never know here. Let's get that out. That won't work. Okay, if I just take this out a second. Oops, don't want to hurt it keep it over the net but hopefully you can see the belly on that thing so it's a range, really strange shape actually that one right well that's a couple of fish we'll get back in there and see if we can get another well, I'm glad I'm not trying to hold this pole because the old arthritic thumbs would be aching about now but you can see how the bump bar or in my case the peg helps you to control the, the the top of the pole stops it from shaking too much obviously it's going to move around a bit but you can't avoid that but you'll also notice that the float's staying pretty much exactly where it's supposed to be 
Is that a bite? And I've got the, the tree shadow just uh, waving over the float. It kind of makes it look like it's going under sometimes, but we shall see. Bites are pretty slow today, aren't they? Just sort of this sort of thing. But you've seen how sluggish the fish are. Again, it's a pretty slow fish until just now. Make sure you get the pole down out of the way again so it's not going to blow anywhere. I don't know how many snags are down there, but not too bad at the moment. This one's woken up a bit. Right down under me now, there's all sorts of rocks and things down there. You know, one of the smaller ones. Oh, missed him. <laughs> there we go. That's it. Okay, that's probably still about three pounds or so, I think. But that's uh, one or two fish being put together in the net. Yeah, starting to get one or two bites now, eh? actually getting stronger at the moment it tends to do that as we uh, get later in the day something I did touch on um, when we first did the the rig setup here was that I was talking about the distance between the pole tip and the float and I mentioned the the back shot what I forgot to mention is don't have too short a lead between the pole tip and the float. If you do, the float will be all over the place. I've probably got a good couple of feet, six, 60 centimetres uh, today, just to make sure that I'm actually getting the control I need. Okay, well, we've had those three fish, and as I've said, the water's really cold, the weather hasn't been great. So you've got to gauge how much and how often you need to put bait in, and also how you do it, of course, but we'll come to that in a second. So I can't tell you the exact frequency and the exact amount of bait you need to put in for your swim because it all depends on the conditions on the day, the venue and what fish you're fishing for. So you've got options though and this is what I'm about to explain now. When it's gusty and windy like this, I really don't recommend that you try and use a, a catapult. If you do, you'll be spreading bait all over the place. Now it does give you some other options, uh, one of which is to use the bait dropper I mentioned a few weeks ago where you put this on the end of your hook put some bait in there, close up and then you literally put that on your hook, it goes down to the bottom that opens and that then lets the bait out now if you haven't got one of those, that's okay um, it really then leaves the pole pot as the only option and I wouldn't recommend putting a small pole pot on the end of your pole when it's really windy gusty conditions because obviously the the wind is going to hit that and make it even worse so that today leaves me with the only other option of feeding with a big pot now i do find here that uh, ground bait works well so i'm going to put a ball in i'm going to chance it it may or may not kill the swim but you've got to do something so as i've done before just put the oops ball in the pot Chip out to where you want to be. Take account of undertow. Now I'm going to put mine sort of about there because the undertow is not too bad here today, but it is going that way, so that will then fall to the bottom where my bait's going to be. So those are your options really when you're uh, feeding a swim in the wind. Um, it's, it's difficult, whatever you do, isn't it? But Hopefully that's given you some idea of, of ex oops, the pole's about to blow away. But hopefully that's given you some idea of how you can approach feeding. I've just realised how cold I was. I uh, did that last little piece for you and then started to shiver. So I've put my coat on. Um, 
wind's actually getting stronger and stronger all the time today so I'll probably give it another hour or so but to be honest sometimes when you get to my age short sessions are what it's all about you just get yourself out there enjoy what you can and then go back home and uh, enjoy the warmth right well probably been about two or three minutes since I last fed as you saw so let's get back in there and see if we can get some more bites going no oh, is that a bite it's kind of looking like bobbing isn't it trouble is with that shadow on the water it's not helping I definitely think there's some more activity down there literally since I put that bait in it's probably just pulled a few more fish in it's looking like a possibility yay amazing isn't it a bit of extra feed and away you go again oh and pulled out of it but we're getting bites that's the main thing I hate fishing in the wind the trouble with fishing with the wind is also that uh, it gets in your eyes and you uh, start having your eyes watering which means you can't really see too well so I'm not actually crying guys <laughs> it's uh, just the wind whipping across okay. and that looks like a bite to me yay amazing isn't it one extra feed like that and all of a sudden the fish come back What have we got here? Oh, <laughs> dear, it's an eel. Oh, no, I hate eels. Yuck. Stop. I'm glad that fell off. <laughs> Look at the slime on that. Yuck. Let's see what we're dealing with. Look, slime everywhere. I think tench slime, but yuck. And you've got to be careful because they also have sort of teeth here and. Uh, they kind of braid the hook length but there's obviously something down there so I'll just clean this off and we'll get back out there <laughs> what a wuss so sluggish today compared to uh, when it's hot as I say make sure you stash your pole before you get back to doing the landing the fish because if you don't you're liable to lose sections oh where's he gone there he is thought he was heading for a snag then <laughs> well, sometimes you just can't win, can you guys? Oof, definitely a bite. Yeah, I thought it was. Well, that's a slow one, isn't he? Oh, I think this is an eel. I definitely think it's an eel. Let's have a look. Well, he's attached me to a tree. <laughs> well, part of a tree. Let's get that out of the way. Ah, look what we're attached to. Didn't actually go under, I kind of struck speculatively. Maybe a little bit early, but hey.
and there's actually a snag down in front of me just down here now where one of the other fish went into it on the bottom it's basically just a branch on the bottom that's <coughs> that's right down in front of me just steer him around it don't think he's all that big this one uh, trouble is it's right down there <laughs> it's going right the way around it you probably can't see it in the water but he's not very big but he's actually a bit more lively than some of the other ones <laughs> that was on a bit of bread yeah it's probably two and a half three pound i suppose Keep still, fish. All right. Here he is, look. As I say, probably three pound. Okay, well, this guy's just come to the top. But I think I've covered pretty much what you need to know about uh, fishing the pole effectively in a the wind then, guys. Um, there may be odd things I've forgotten, but I think I've got most of the, the points that I needed to make across. Um, bear in mind, of course, that you can't always fish a pole in the wind because sometimes it's just too strong or there's too much of a crosswind or, or whatever. But uh, honestly, sometimes you can catch even in really poor conditions. And today is a fairly poor conditions. Oh, remember... <sighs> I'll put that off to one side because I think I'm going to pack in after this fish too. Um, remember, as I say, sometimes you just have to give it best and go to a feeder or something like that. Oh, he's taking me into a bit of a snag. But look, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, you can. And until the next time, come on fish, out the way. Gotcha. Bye for now.